And there you go. There's number three, small eye. What a beautiful fish. They're all about the same size. Nice fish, but not doubles. But I don't really care. It's been a great session. I've had a fish every cast. How you doing everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Bristol channel. As you can see, we have been here before, haven't we? We're just down at Minehead. It's a pretty famous mark on the wall behind us. I'm not giving nothing away. We're down left of Minehead, walking out towards Grenley. It's a bit of a walk. And if you're not fit, and you're worried about breaking your leg or your ankle, which you should be, then this is definitely not the mark for you. My name's Wayne, this is the Bristol Channel. Let's go fishing everyone. Obviously last time I was fishing at Porlock, the fishing has been pretty hard. I've not really been doing many videos, but we're back now to posting on a Monday evening at 1800 and then again on a Wednesday. I will not let this happen again where we have a gap or we don't have any content, I promise you, for the rest of the year. So here we go, the sun's shining, We've got the rods, we've got the bait, we've definitely got the rigs, but have I got the skill to catch us a few fish? Let's wait and see. The sun's shining. We've got the wind. For some reason, it's a southwesterly, and it's straight in my face. Don't you just love it this year? For me, this year, that was a good start. The weather has been atrocious. For your average person, it's not been too bad. It's not really been cold. We've had a great June. The sun has been shining. But if you're a fisher person like me, and you probably are, because you're watching this video, or this video, not these, because there's only one being filmed, um, the wind, it's just been atrocious. We had like six weeks of north easterly. <laughs> which killed it. And now we've got a southwesterly coming from the north, pretty random, and it's 25 mile an hour winds again. Today I was due to be on Chesil Beach with Stu Jones filming, but instead you've got me here in Minehead to get out of this wind that's straight in my face. Work that one out. If a wind direction was this on Chesil, I'd be laughing, but I know it's not. To be honest, we've got a few showers running the channel at the moment and we call them squalls that's what they're known as and they're little weather pockets and this wind is all over the place when i was at the car park it was a natural southwesterly now i'm out here it's straight in my face and as we talk it's just dropped out but look the fishing should be fine hopefully my rods won't go over again like last time my camera won't smash over and i can make a nice video for you what i'm going to do now is continue setting up we are about an hour and a half before low. It's the biggest set of the tide, so it's 10.6 metres, which isn't massive for the Bristol Channel, but it's a half decent one. We will be out on the sand, as you can see, but we're not going to be right out on the sand as if it was a massive tide like before. But look, we've definitely got a chance. Today I'm going to be targeting rays, so as I said, let me sort my stuff out. When I bring you back, I'll talk you through my techniques, I'll show you my kit, I've got a different rod with me again today. I've well, got one of each. So I've got a Naga and I've got a Performance. Let's see how they compare next to each other and see how it goes. Anyway, thanks for joining me. You know it's a privilege. I really appreciate it. Let's do some fishing. It's quite mild, which is a bonus. It's not raining. So you will see I have got a competition Naga on my left and a competition performance to the right. They're pretty similar. They look pretty much the same for a layman, which we are. Firstly, this performance is 13 foot six. For someone my size, I'm not exactly a strapping lad, am I? If you had to think of a few things to say about me, it wouldn't be that I'm a big strapping hunk of a man. Now I'm only five foot eight. So for me, 13 foot six is perfect. 
The Naga is 14, but I love it as well. I've got used to it and I absolutely love it. As I said before, the Naga casts up to eight ounces. I believe this casts up to seven. So with this rod, you get away with six plus bait, fine. You get away with seven. It's a little bit lighter than the Naga, but it's beautiful, look. Fuji eyes, got my tip tape. As I've said, it's just a little bit shorter, which suits me down to the ground. I just want you to know that I paid for these rods, okay? When I work the trade shows, I get paid because I go to work and I invest it back in rods and kit. So I bought myself a pair of the performances. I paired them up again with my Fathom 15s, magged, old version, not the casting specials, the older ones. And I love them. 22 pound mainline, 80 pound shock leader. So on the weekend, I went and watched Def Leppard, who are my favorite group. It's the first group I went to see with my missus 22 years ago in Bristol, in the Colston Hall. It's not called that now anymore, for some strange reason. But yeah, 22 years, and we went to Wembley and watched Def Leppard on Saturday. Amazing. They were supported by Motley Crue. Now, I'd never listened to Motley Crue before. And when I was there, I didn't really appreciate it, but the guitar stuff is great. Since I come home, I can't stop listening to it. It's a big row and it's lots of noise, but I like it. So I've kind of, I like a little bit of the Motley Crew now. But yeah, they had some fans like that, all in black, black waistcoats. And then Def Leppard come on. I don't really know how the Motley Crew and Def Leppard can be on the same bill. One's like soft rock, one's like heavy metal, but it worked. And all the fans were great. One thing on the way, I'm just sorry I'm not talking fishing, but we will do in a minute. I'm just waiting for the tide to go out. I think something that I was like almost going to post on my social media, it was Pride Weekend in London. And take that, we're playing in Hyde Park where we were staying. We went on the tube station, or went into the tube station, sorry, and I was stood on the platform and I just had one of those moments where you look around, just people watching. We had the Pride, so you had Obviously gays, lesbians, trans, whatever. You know, how many, you know, there's loads of different types uh, of people. And then you had the Motley Crue fans, the Def Leppard fans, and then you had Take That fans all together on the platform, talking, chatting, getting on. And I just thought, sometimes this country, we get accused of ignorance and not moving forward obviously there's plenty of work to do in this country like others but just seeing that for a split second that rockers from the motley crew were stood next to lesbians and gays and trans and everyone just getting on it just made me feel i don't know it's not as bad as they try and make out obviously if you're in those situations and i'm sure lots of you have had bad experiences and i wouldn't know because i'm just a straight 40 year old white guy in the UK but I liked it it was quite nice but that's my thoughts on it obviously it's not an educated opinion and I probably shouldn't be talking about it because I've not experienced it but for me Saturday evening in London it was a beautiful thing anyway that's my little say on it don't hold me to it it's just an opinion but yeah the weather's settling down the water's just going out now what I'm going to do is put my other reel on, have two or three casts, as you know, straighten the line out on the reels, make sure my mags are set nice, and we'll do some fishing. Thanks again for joining me, everyone. 
the sun shining, hopefully today we can get into a blonde ray, a spotted ray, or a small eyed ray. You don't really get fawnies down here, you can, but they're quite rare, but we've got a chance. I've just bought fish baits with me, but what I'll do in a minute, I'll bring you back, I'll show you my rigs, we'll do some baiting up, and most importantly, we'll do some fishing. Bait wise, sand deal, right baits, squid, that's it. I've got some crab in the van. I just thought I'd come out and target a ray. So for my first cast, I'm just going to put a five foot pulley with a single hook. Where I'm fishing, I'm fishing over broken ground. Pretty much what you've got here, look. That's a great explanation for where I'm fishing. Sometimes I come down and fish with a rotten bottom. As I've said to you before, it's not always the weight that gets stuck. It's normally the circle hook. If I was fishing for cod and hangs, I wouldn't be fishing with a single hook. Not as a rule. I believe you miss quite a few bites. But as I'm fishing for rays, I'm happy to fish with a single hook. On the sand deal. On the other rod, I'm going to fish with whole squid, where I'll be just using my four foot putty panel, as per normal. What I'm going to do now is just bait up a sand deal bait for you. I know I tell you all the time, make sure your frozen bait stays frozen and your fresh bait stays fresh. I know I've done this before lots of times, but I'm going to show you again. So what I like to do, one sand deal, head and tail. Head that end, or where the head was, the fatter end, thinner end. Then I get the same again and reverse. So you get a nice square bait, like so. Then I get my bait X, which someone asked me the other day, which one do I prefer? I like using the heavy and medium. I find the fine, 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 is a little too fine but each to their own. So there you go, I'll put my knee on here. I've not got my waterproofs on today, as it's quite warm. So I don't want to get a wet knee. How you all doing? I hope you're doing well. Answer in the comments. I hear people say that on YouTube all the time. So if you're doing well, answer. If you're not doing too well, answer as well. And I'm sure as a community, well, I hope on my YouTube channel, we can all help each other out. As I said to you before, this channel is probably 60% fishing and 40% brotherhood. I know we've got some women who watch as well, but you know what I mean. Look at that. So we get the fattest end. I like to put the hook right in, as you know, like so. I know I'm using a single hook, so I've got to make sure I use quite a lot of Baytex. As we said before, this is latex, not elastic, so it's better for the environment, so I can get away with using quite a lot. So single hook, it's more important Doing a great job here, Wayne. It's my fault. Right to the end. And there you go. Remember, we want that hook to stay loud and proud. There you go, double sand deal, head and tailed on a five foot pulley, single hook, 
ready for a small eyed ray. So I've had a couple of practice casts to make sure the line lays good. For me, distance isn't really key here. So I'm not gonna belt it. Just get it out there. Wish me luck, everyone. It's a new day. As I said, welcome to Minehead. It's lunchtime. Let's have a go. Not perfect, but it never is. But we're out there and we're fishing. As you see, let's put the squid on the bait needle, as per normal. The head is very important. So what I like to do is put a nice layer of bait X on. Go around again, one, two, three. We've done that before. For some reason, my camera went off then. So unlike the sand deal, as I've got a big bait, I'm going to use a panel. So that means two hooks. So I've got a 3 j hook through the shoulder of the squid into the head, like so. Like that. I know we've done this so many times. But if you work on your bait presentation, you will definitely catch more. Not only will you catch more, you'll cast further. Because your bait will be more streamlined. It won't spin in the air. It'll be more aerodynamic and it will help you out massively. As I like to say to you, and I tell you over and over, it doesn't matter if you've got a 5,000 pound rod with a 1,000 pound reel which isn't really a thing off of the beach. Well, the reel is, but not the rod. If your bait presentation is shit and your rigs are shit, you've got no hope. So I would go, bait presentation number one, rigs number two, casting three, Kit required, four, and then patience, five. And then we can go on. Stupidity, 10, just like me. Don't just stick it on and chuck it out there. Have some pride in your work, and I promise you, it will work. As I've been lucky enough to fish with pretty much the best anglers in the UK, one thing they've got in common is, firstly, they're all nice people. You will find in the fishing world, when I take people out, this is just my opinion, again, by the way, when I take people out who've never fished before, they're really nice people. In all my years, five years of coaching, I've not experienced anyone that's been difficult or well, I don't know what you'd say. Weird? <laughs> no, everyone's been really nice. And we've stayed that way. I love speaking to everyone I've taken out. What I find in the fishing world is, the people who just start are nice, friendly, helpful, wanna learn. P 
people at the very top are the same. Tom Bagnall, Stu Jones, a lot of the England team, or everyone I know who can fish at the top level are really nice. It's the people in between. For some reason, I don't know what happens. Some people just, I don't know. This is not everyone. This is like one in a hundred maybe. Just don't seem to be very nice. But that's what we have to deal with. It's like life, I suppose. Life's not easy and everyone's not nice. So fishing is the same. So just look out for yourself. Go fishing with one or two people like I do that can afford their own bait, help with the driving, help land your fish, won't just sit on your box or their box when you go in, help, I've got a decent fish. Find a friend that will help you. Find someone that will share the driving and find someone that splits the bait cost. And if you get all them things right, this can be a beautiful thing. Right, well, there you go. A whole squid mounted on a four foot pulley panel with a circle hook with my magic tubing for resistance. We've done all this before. If you were a blonde ray, would you eat that? Get it out there, get it out on that tide. Obviously the tide's still going out, so that's ebbing. So that's coming from right to left. That's the Bristol Channel, that way's not. So all this water is coming down from right at the very top, the seven, all the way down. So I need to walk up right. When it lands, let out a little bow of line so that my line settles in front of my rod rest and my rods. I've only got a wet boot there. Oh, I hooked that one. Oh, I messed that one up. And there you go. I messed that cast up. I hooked it. We're all human. I don't know how I've done that. And there we are. That's both rods out. Left hand side, Naga. Right hand side, competition performance. Similar tip action. As I've said, the right hand rod, the performance, has a slightly lighter tip, as you can tell, and it's a little bit shorter. But one good thing about this rod, as I get asked all the time, when is the Naga coming back in stock? The performance is in stock now. And I know quite a few shops who have got stock. I believe, which I can check for you now, they retail the same price, just over 300 pounds. When I stop filming in a minute, I'll go back, I'll check on my phone. But there you are, we're fishing. Ratchets on, naturally. What I'm gonna do is take them off. As you know by now, I don't like to put them up in the cups because if I get a fish take me over or some weed, it all goes over and you're more than likely going to smash your eye out. When two go over, it's a little bit more heavier. Obviously the rod rest goes. When you have the rods on the floor, not only have you got a separate point of contact, now five instead of three, if one goes over or lifts up, normally you should be watching your rod anyway. I've got my ratchets on, so it shouldn't happen, but sometimes we forget. If one goes up, Worst case scenario, it goes over, I'm gonna see it and grab it, but it's not gonna smash a whole setup up. Especially, it's not too bad on sand, but if you're fishing like a wall or rock mark, I wouldn't ever put my rods in the cups. But it's up to you. As I said, it's just the way I do it. It's not the correct way. 
lots of you do it. I'll leave you with them. Before I go, you can see now, when those rods are next to each other, the difference in length of the performance. For me, as I'm quite small, 13.6 is my size rod. But I've been fine with the 14, but 13.6 all day long. Just pulled down, classic ray bite, and it's slack lined me. Right. Yeah, slacking me off. I just tighten it up a bit. I was just gonna put the camera on, it just went over, 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 and then came back. It could be a dog. I doubt it though. Look more ray. -y. I'll tighten it back up. Just give it a bit more time if I didn't catch. Just put it in the, in the rest for now. There you go. Slap. Yeah, fish on. Ooh. We're in. Slap, line me now. It's not very deep out there. So if it's a rain, normally they come up on top. Oh. Not sure what we've got here, everyone. Must be a dog. It's not up on top. But it's shallow, so. Oh, I don't know. Let's keep going. How's that wind Ah! Fucking hell! Ah! 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 Fucking Don't know what I've got, it's kicking. Oh, nice. And there we go. Got the wind right in our face and it blew the camera over, but we're into a small line. A beautiful female. Look at that. She's got a light, uh, I'll take that off in a minute. But there you go. First cast and we're into the fish. Thanks, Mrs. Small Eye. She's taking that in. Oh, I've got a T-bar. I'll unhook her on the squid. That was that miscast as well. I was just gonna tell you before, if you ever have a miscast, leave it and that's the reason. But look, I'm gonna get this fish back. That's a nice fish. Let's keep going. Thanks everyone. Right, just been slap line on the left arm rod. I was just baiting up again. Hey, on the performance. Yep, on the double sand hill. Oh, come on, son. Tighten it up again. I don't like to hit it straight away. It's on a single hook, yeah? Definite slack line, but what I'm gonna do is give it a little bit, a little bit of slack. As I've said, I'm using one hook. As you've seen, that's the one I just put out on the sandbar, hoping for a turbot. We'll leave it for now. There's a bit of tide running out there because I put it a little bit further. But we'll leave it. I'll continue baiting up. But as you've seen, it come flying back. Definitely not a dogfish. I'll leave it for now.
I'll just keep you running. Well, it's nice to see a few fish about. Apparently it's been fishing hard. Let's carry on beating that. I've not had time to get a spare rig ready. It's been pretty insane. And it makes a bloody change. No, we do all right. But we had a hard session last week, eh? Or this week. That's absolutely crazy if that fish is gone. Pulled me right over and slapped me off. Some of you would be saying, that's what you get for using a single hook. I think last time I lost four sets because of the hook getting caught up. So you take your chances. As I like to tell you all the time, I'm just like you. I'm not a superstar angler. I don't know it all. I have a session and if things go right, I continue to do it. And then if things go wrong, I try and change it. And that's where we're at. Hopefully we've got a fish just sat on there. There's quite a lot of tide out, further out. So hopefully the fish just sat in the tide. I'm not hopeful. There you go. Looks like an off end. Just baiting up. It looks like it's come yet. Fish is on. There we go. It's running. See, it works. I've got slack line. Shit. That fish is on. Slack everywhere. Look. Hey. This could be a nice ray. There we are. Into a fish, I think. Yeah. Oh. This fish is swimming. This is quite weird. Might come off. Surely, can that? Yeah, it has. Oh. Yeah. After all that, single hooks, eh? That's what you're saying. Oh man, I missed it after all that. That's a ray. It's just pulled it out of his mouth. Oh, never mind. I'll put a double hook on this one now. That's it. React to a situation. Damn it. Look at that. Oh my God. Right, I'm gonna put a second hook on that one. I tried and I failed. That's fishing. We're getting next time. Oh, oh well. out there. Wow, I messed up there. Slap on the wrist, eh? The right hand rod just had a pull down. It tightened up and pulled down. Where are we now? Nice to get a few bites. That's on a whole squid on a pulley panel. A nice circle sat on that one. You'll be pleased to know I switched up to panels on both.
there you go, a little pull down then. Hopefully that was a ray landing on it. As I've said to you before, there's no rush. I normally find the best day of the tide is a flood. And that's my third bite on the ebb. And I'd say it was another ray. So things are looking up. But like everything, I've had it before where I've had fish on the ebb. There you go. That could be a dogfish. And then on the flood, you don't get a bite. But that's how it is. But look, it's looking promising. I believe I've probably got a dogfish on that one. That was a single hook before. Oh, that's a pulley panel. Give it a minute and we'll have that one in. I think it might be a woofer on there. Curled up in a ball. Just at the turn of the tide now. The best time for me in the whole UK for catching a ray. That first half an hour of the flood can be outstanding here and on Chesil and anywhere else, even in Scotland on the common skate. Right, I'm gonna pick this rod up, I'll tighten into it and let's see if anything's there. Let's turn you around. I've had a couple of bites on this, nothing definite. But yeah, could be another ray just sat on it. It could be a woofer. Put some pressure on it and we'll find out. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's a ray. Could be spotted. Yeah. We're into a fish. Forgot. Could be another ray. Should see it up on top if it's a ray. Yeah, it's not a dog. I'm saying, I spotted. I might be wrong. I might have a dogfish in the ass. It doesn't feel like a dog. Keep it going. Put this one out quite far, so. Oh, hopefully it's a little turbo. That'd be nice. Whatever it is, it's just. Oh, what for God? Double sand hill, pulley panel, out she goes. I've got a nice little surprise for you now. I did have a fish on that last cast. I've got it in a rock pool. It's a shark with teeth. Right, my mate Mario, who you know from the channel, catches these fish at 80 pounds. Wayner catches them at 0.8 of a pound. It's got teeth and it can eat you. It's in a rock pool. I don't want to piss it off because it might bite me. I think it's settled enough. Right, hopefully I make it, but I'll be back. Hopefully. Ready? There's a song that goes with this. Do 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 do
Look at that little chap. Hello, darling. That is absolutely beautiful. What a fish. That is a taupe, everyone. It's got teeth. Look at them. I don't want to harm it. It's alive and kicking. And it's beautiful. It's fin perfect. In the Sea Angling Classic, that's what I had taken off me. One at 40 odd pound, 151 centimetres. But that's a taupe. That's a shark. We've survived and I'll get this chap back to cause havoc and maybe eat a child. You never know. Cheers, everyone. We're on the fish. Free casts, free bites. One bad angling mistake cost me the second fish, but the first and third, we got them. Cheers, everyone. Well, as you can see, both rods have got tied. Nice bend in the tips. It's a good chance for you to see the competition performance against the Naga. The performance is on the left, the Naga is the right. So there's not much difference. Both put out there quite far in the tide. Got plenty of tide now. We're about 40 minutes after the bottom. So it's flooding, wow. I'd expect to be on the fish now if we're gonna get any more. But as I've said, I had three fish on the ebb, or three bites on the ebb, sorry. We won't talk about the, you know, the kit malfunction. But we've not had a bite on the flood. It's not a problem. We've caught a fish, we've caught two, but we want a few more. Well, I'll keep fishing. I'll keep putting the baits out. And hopefully, I can get us a blonde. That'd be nice. I've just been casting every 20 minutes. I've not had to bring in one yet without a fish. But yeah, I've got a bait ready here. Treble sand eel. Triple sand eel on a pulley. Looking good. One good thing about today, touch wood, no dogfish. Which is absolutely and truly amazing. I'm quite hopeful for a turbot. They are not normally massive down this area. Not like the ones you get in the boats off of Weymouth or off of the banks. But they can be two or three pound if you're very lucky. The general stamp will be about a pound. But we've got a chance. I'll get out of your way. You keep watching. We're trying hard. We're catching fish. But more importantly, the sun's shining. I'm getting fresh air and I feel great. Look at my right hand rod. It could be a ray. Looks a little bit doggy, fied. But we've got a hope, we've got a bite. On a whole squid, that is. There you go. Could be a ray. We're getting some action. Sunshine, isn't it? it's beautiful. On, son. Got to be a ray, isn't it? Come on, break the lead out.
any more indication and I'll hit it. It might be a dog. Have a look. Have a look, shall we? So <sighs> right out there. Hopefully. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I've got a bit of weed here. I think that could be a fish as well. Oh yeah, this fish is coming. This could be a decent fish. As you can see, I've got weed on. There's a fish on there as well. That's a ray. I think so. That weed's pissing me off, but I don't want to slack. Don't want to do anything different. But just keep this fish coming. That fish has gone in. The rocks, it's coming. Come on. You can feel it out there. It's coming. Yes. It's a better fish, everyone, unless I've got it in the ass. Oh, squid again. For some reason, it's not come up on top of its array. Feels right, even normally they come straight up on top. This one's not. Here we are. It's going mad now. Oh. Yeah, it's a ray. Can it be a blonde? What have we got? Bit of weight to it. Oh. Come on. Oh. Is that blonde? And there you go. That's another beautiful small eyed. Look, this is the rig that I missed that bite on. Look at that circle hook. It's not in the mouth. It's just underneath. But that's how important it is to have a panel on this occasion. But there you go. She's well annoyed with me. But that's another beautiful small line here in Minehead, in the mighty Bristol Channel. I'm just going to take the hook out, hopefully. And there you go. Circle. Oh, don't want to come out. Get my tea bar if I need it. There. And there we go, should we put her back? As you know, I put most of my fish back, especially when I'm filming, I pretty much put them all back. But sometimes, because I'm filming on my own, I don't always show you when I release them. So I am now. This fish is nice and settled. Let's get her away. Just let her get her breath back and then I'll walk her out. There's not really many rock pools here. Come on. There you go. She goes. Well, that's beautiful, hey? There she goes. Oh, I haven't got waders on. If I did, I'd follow her out. And there she goes. I'm in again. I've just beaten up another rig and it just pulled right down. This time, I'm on the performance. Now, will I land one? This fish might be up on the top. It also could be our first dog, but it feels like a ray. I keep it going. Fish is a fish, eh? No, I didn't. Wow. I caught a fish 
on the competition performance. Unfortunately, the battery's died. So you have to take my word for it. Oh. Anyway, that's another shark. Look at that one. You can see why they get to 80 pound. It's greedy little monkeys. And there you go. They're tough little things as well. But there you go. That's a shark. That's number two. We've had two rays, two sharks, and we're having a very good time here in Minehead. What a great little session. Got a bite every cast. We're about an hour and a quarter into the flood. So I've probably got about an hour left. You can fish it up here, it's fine, but I'm not gonna. As soon as you go right up and you're fishing over that lip, I find you, um, you can wine fish into it. And I don't like losing kit and leaving fish tethered up. But yeah, it's great. I've had a bite every cast and no dogfish, which is a bonus. Yeah, it's beautiful as well. It's nice to be out, everyone. I hope you can get out. If not, I hope you're enjoying the videos. It's great to hear your feedback. Make sure you get involved. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, it helps me. It's a one man band. I've not got a team. I've not got anyone promoting me or doing all my editing or doing anything really, it's all me. It's up to you. If you like my videos, subscribe. It costs you nothing and it helps me out. But you don't have to, do you? I subscribe to everyone I like on YouTube. I used to ask you lot to subscribe to me and then I'd be like, oh, I'm not subscribed to everyone who I like. So I just went through, subscribe to everyone. Just a little token gesture to say thanks for people that put the effort in and I do try it's not boring same fish in the same area I'm literally like Bristol Channel Chesil we'll be going to Scotland we've got two trips to Norway we've got loads of stuff planned I was just about to move the rods back and look at the state of that right hand one it's come flying back let's see if we've got some on there this is unbelievable apart from the fish that I missed I've not actually bought it in without a fish. I've had a bite every cast, which is, you know, not bad. If I may say so, myself. The tide's coming in now. We've probably only got um, another 40 minutes, I'd say. Yeah, we've got a fish on. Right, take you with me. We've got a fish. It's not a ray, might be another taupe. Small one again. Let's see what we got. There you go, a beautiful taupe. Again, number three. I've had a bite every cast, which is pretty epic. But look, I'm gonna unhook this fish. This is a shark and it has teeth. I'll get her back. She's one for the future and I'll keep fishing. Probably got about 50 minutes, 45 minutes left and I'm sure we're getting to a few more fish. What a session, everyone. Cheers. Thanks, Mr. Tote. Here you go, there's a fish on there. Oh, what a session. 
Right, I'll take you with me. I'm going to turn you around and I pick the rod up. This fish is going dang tight. Hopefully we can get a decent fish on my brand new rod. I had a tope. That's a good start. But it went a 40 pounder. But what a session. Hopefully this is a blonde. It started taking line. It's coming. Yes. Get in. This feels about a fish. Hopefully I can get it up on top. Double sander. I don't think this is a little tope. I just keep it going. Keep it over those rocks. They're like just those little, the little run of rocks out there, probably 60, 70 yards out. And they like just hitting into that. They know what they're doing. That's a better fish. I don't think it's a blonde. It's not up on top. It's definitely a ray. Come on, son. This fish is fighting a lot better than any of the others. It could be a blonde, you know? What a rod. I'm loving it. This rod is so nice and light. It's just... Feels a nice fish. Could be hooked in the towel. Could be anything, but it does feel about a fish. It's out there on the top, so it's another ray. Just surfing in. It's got to be a blonde. It's kite and left. Feels more like a blonde. Fighting like a stinger. Come on, son. What have we got? Oh, it's a fawny. Oh, I'm oh, not moaning. It's a beautiful form back. So there you go. He's not very big. Got a right set of gonads on him. He had a right attitude problem coming in then. But that is a form back ray. There's loads in the Bristol Channel. Loads and loads. But here, yeah, that's quite a nice catch. Anyway, I'll get this little chap back. That's another fish. That is literally a bite every cast. That's amazing. Thanks everyone. Thanks Mr. Formback. And you are very pretty. So I was just packing up really. I've decided to have another cast. I can fish it for two or three hours back. I just like to get off. You seem to lose the tide and then you lose the fish. But today I've had a fish every cast. So I'm thinking I ought to stay a little bit. There's got to be a blonde out there or maybe a turbot just to finish off the session. But I'm not worried, we're on the fish. And I've caught a fish on my new rod. This one, the competition performance. And what a rod. I love it. I know it's initial impressions and I've not used it for eight months like the Naga, but I absolutely love it. It's so light. And as you see, it handles fish in the Bristol Channel. And that's a good thing. Oh my God, that rod I've just put out, look, the performance, I've got a massive slack line. <laughs> this has got to be one of the best sessions I've ever had with you guys with me. What the hell? There's people fishing up to my right, I've not seen them catch anything. This is mental. In those rocks again. This could be a blonde. Just scrapping. It's right out there. You can feel it coming over those rocks. Here we go. I'm loving this rod, by the way. I know I work for Tronics Pro, so 
you can take everything I'm saying with a pinch of salt, but you're going to see me use this rod a lot more. It's beautiful. Off we go. It's definitely a ray. Hopefully it's a blonde. Doesn't want to come in. Put it, put it that way. It's just stuck just so. Yeah, it's up on top. What have we got? It's either a small light or a blonde. Scrapping. Oh, I reckon it's a blonde. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on, son, be a blonde. Oh, oh what have we got? Oh, I reckon it's a big small eye. Oh, it's going mad. And there you go. There's number three, small eye. What a beautiful fish. They're all about the same size. Nice fish, but not doubles. But I don't really care. It's been a great session. I've had a fish every cast. Obviously, I lost one, and that was down to having one hook. But if you have a look, this fish is nailed on the circle hook right in the kisser. But I'll get her unhooked, and I'll get her back. But what a session, probably one of the best we've had together. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've got another rod in the water. I may get this one back out. There's got to be some more fish out there. It's fishing, it's bollocks off. Woohoo! A charter boat's come in here. They'll have some fish on there. Right, that's it now. I'm hanging. I literally had a fish every cast, but look. I'm going to wind this in. I've not had a bite, but you know how it goes. We might have a fish on there anyway. Yeah, we have. It's probably a dog, this one. Hopefully it's a little turbot and that'll finish off the day. But yeah, I've got to go out tonight. So I could have fished on for another half an hour here and then moved a little bit further up, but hey, I'm not gonna outstay my welcome. You know my rules. I've had a good day or afternoon. I've only been fishing for four hours. Well, not even that, actually. <laughs> I'm outdoing myself there. Huh? About three. I've had four taupe and four rays. Oh my god, I might not have a fish on here. Got a bit of weed. Can't let me down. Got a bit of weed. I might have blanked on this one. <laughs> but there you go. What a load of rubbish. <laughs> Well, what a session, everyone. Thanks again for joining me on my channel. If it's the first video you watched of mine, they're all like this, I promise you. But look, that's been four hours, or just under four hours, of proper fishing. I fished hard, I made a mistake, I switched it up. It's a pleasure to show you that it's a thinking game. I had to think on my feet, I missed a fish, we switched it up, and I've not missed a bite since. As I say, my name's Wayne, this is the Bristol Channel. This is beautiful Minehead. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you next week somewhere else where hopefully I can repeat it and we can get into a few fish. But it'll be somewhere different. I'll mix it up. You know me by now. We'll get out somewhere else. Chesil is pretty much unfishable at the moment because of the winds. 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. It's just not worth fishing. It's fishing hard. There's lots of spiders and it won't be comfortable. I'll see you again, everyone. Take care and thank you very much for watching.